Melody, as a leader of nurses who vaccinate and a nurse, how are you handling misinformation online in the workplace and with family friends? We're making sure that we are providing uh, evidence-based research and uh, answering questions of those that we see that are uh, whether as a comments or posts from families and friends. People, if they're legitimately asking questions, that we are there to provide the information that they're seeking. So as nurses, we're not immune to falling victim to misinformation. So it's really important that we as nurses and we help our colleagues understand how to interpret good research, uh, help them to understand the criteria of what makes a, good, a study a good study versus one that's not. Um, helping everyone to stay up to date with the latest recommendations and the guidelines. Um, that's really important, especially as, as we have seen with this pandemic. Um, sometimes information can change on a weekly to almost daily basis, but that's not a bad thing. It just means that we as, um, as a community, as a society, we're learning more about this particular virus. Well, we don't blame or shame or just present facts and say you're wrong. Um, and I think that that's an important piece of... Um, of presenting accurate information online because it's not just the person you're responding to. It's on social media, for example, everyone else who's reading that thread. And we want to be really clear to appear professional and sympathetic because there are people who are concerned. And I know Melody mentioned explaining to people why, what's a good study and what's not. And I feel like that's a big gap um, in knowledge between us as professionals and the general public, because they might not have had the training to understand why something is bad science based on the study design. Absolutely. And even, you know, when you're talking to your uh, legislators, sometimes you will be confronted with maybe a study that they've come, come across. Um, you may not be familiar with it, but uh, it's always important to let people know that you may not have the answers right then and there. And it's so important to facilitate a relationship um, and a rapport when you're talking to your legislators, to let them know that you, you'll you get back to them with this research, because that's what a good researcher does. Because especially as a shot at life champion, whether you're a nurse or not, you are gonna be in a position here and you're gonna have a title, right? You're a shot at life champion, you're part of this organization. Right. So we're not representing Shot at Life at these meetings, hosting events, educating people about Shot at Life and what they do across the world. It's so important to remember that it's okay to let people know you don't have the answers because you're going to know the people who do. I'm a colleague and Melody, you know, I'm sorry. Um, I did get your email about calling our Congress people and stuff about getting the vaccine bill through but you know i have to be honest with you i have i have grandchildren there are too many vaccines given at the same time and it's really a danger to our children i don't understand why they why they're not spaced out i i think they're very important i'm not saying i'm against vaccines i certainly am for vaccines and we're all vaccinated but it's just too many at one time so I'm not comfortable. So as a, as a fellow nurse, um, you know, I definitely can understand why someone would be very hesitant when they see how many vaccines there are to offer. And, you know, as a mother, I want to make sure I'm making the right decisions for my own children and making sure I'm giving patients and family and friends the best information possible. So I always take these kind of questions to the experts when I need to. And what I have found out is that giving a child several vaccines during the same uh, visit gives you two advantages. One, you're getting them the vaccine as quickly as possible and they're getting the protection during those early months of their life. And giving the, uh, several vaccines in one, in one visit, one means few, fewer visits. It saves time, it saves money, and studies have shown it's less traumatic for the child. Um, but I do know that sometimes people are worried about the immune system being overwhelmed. That's what I'm worried about. So we have plenty of scientific data that has shown that giving, getting several vaccines at once does not cause any chronic health problems. And we've been able to test this in various studies, not just here in America, but across the world. We have robust information that this is the safest way to go about this. And we do know that um, not only does the CDC recommend this, but the American Academy of Pediatrics 
also recommend getting all the routine childhood vaccines on time and according to whatever schedule you're you're using, whether it's the catch up schedule or the regular schedule. So we want to make sure we're not we're not leaving them open. I would be more worried about delaying a vaccine. And even by that two or three weeks, we really we can't afford that right now. Now is the time to get everyone up to date with their vaccines because leaving them unvaccinated leaves them unprotected.